so welcome back to my channel in this vlog I will be looking back at 2017 the adventures I've been on lessons I've learned and the people I've met I'm looking forward to 2018 to the many more adventures I go on and the new people I meet and of course some more lessons that I learned so let's begin so the first big thing of 2017 is I am officially a graduate. So in the summer I graduated with my BA Open Degree, Ordinary Degree from the Open University. So this next year, well, well I've already started, I'm working on my honours year, which is the final year that you do when you're at normal university. So I'm officially a graduate, though I haven't been to a ceremony obviously. And well, of course, it wouldn't be a year if Amy hadn't met any of our faves. So this year is quite a big year for me and meeting my faves. So we'll begin with Max, shall we? So I started the real year very well because I met Max at the very beginning of the year in pool when he was doing pantomime and he was playing Aladdin. I went with Hannah, who's my Twitter bestie and who I run Team Max on Twitter with. Links will be in the description below. And... It was really good. Um, I loved Aladdin because you got to see Max's three talents and I will arguably say he is a singer, dancer and actor. So funny as well and because obviously it's a pantomime there's lots of parts with the kids in and he was so good with the kids. It was so it was so much fun and he made sure he saw us after it as well which was really nice and so that was good. So the next time I met Max was in Hull and that was in April. It was a pretty epic journey to get there. It was um, my first overnight coach plus staying somewhere in the very small hours to wait for a train. <laughs> but I got there in the end, eventually. And that was at an event hosted by Gemma Olton. And along with Max, which was also down in my heart shirt, um, Callum Train was also there, um, Sally Dexter, as well as lots of other people from the whole local area and it was to do with one-off entertainment which is a production company that I think Gemma worked for when she was quite younger and it was just a kind of showcase and to be on. So Max sang a song from Spring Awakening and he also sang Broken and Vowel. And the final time I met Max was a very random one. I will add this. So he wasn't sinning, it wasn't at an event, it wasn't a show, it was technically a night out. So it was his best friend, his best friend, who is also called Max, confusing. And he is a business owner and he owns Buck and Bill Saloon, which is a country, well will be a country nightclub in London. And they started by doing lots of little pop-up events throughout last year. So I managed to be able to go to the first one. And I saw Max and it was a great night. Hannah hung with him, had some great laughs. Um, so it was a really good night. It was just nice to it not be after an event or before an event, just to hang out with him and have a laugh. And it was awesome. So I met Max three times, plus a very, very, very close encounter of me, a pane of glass, and then Max. Yeah, I'm still annoyed at myself for that one, honestly. And that's where anxiety is a big annoyance. So you may also know that along with Max, I also have another fave. And that is the very lovely Gemma Oten. You may know her as Rachel Breckel in Emmerdale and as Nurse Sydney Summers in Hobie City, as well as lots of other amazing things that Gemma has done. So I know I support Gemma through the work she did with Andrew Bullion and also the work she's done just just being herself about what she's came through from when she was younger and how she's worked through this and changed and it's, she's just such an inspiration and I really do love her. So obviously the first time I met Gemma was in Hull and it was so nice to meet her when she was home so lovely, bless her. And she actually sang with broken ribs when she sang at the event in the hall. Pretty impressive because she couldn't really tell. Um, I also got to meet her family and her dad. 
I got a handshake from my dad for travelling all the way down from Scotland. I'll take that. So I then met Gemma in a place called Stevenage in November. Now, in case you do not know, Stevenage is just north of London. Don't worry, I didn't know where it was either. And she was doing a play, Up and Under, which is a comedy play about a rugby league team from a pub set in Hull. Um, so it was so good to like, properly see Gemma on stage and she was so funny. It was great. It was such a laugh. And um, we, we saw her before the show. Um, but yeah, it was such a laugh. She was so good. Um, so that was really good. And then finally, and most recently, I managed to see Gemma on my 26th birthday, which was a Sunday the 17th of December. And I saw Gemma when she played the evil fairy in Sleeping Beauty at Dorking Halls, Dorking, sorry, another random place. Um, it was so good, even though I did get slightly embarrassed because I got a birthday message read out aloud from Gemma at one point in the show and the whole audience sang happy birthday to me. Um, I saw Gemma at that one after the show and she was more than happy to see me and sign things and she basically just kept repeating like thank you for coming all this way and you didn't have to and thank you for your support and all that. But I did have to Gemma because I support you and you support me and that is what we do. And finally, but last not least, is the very lovely Danny Boy Hatchard. Now, I will admit I didn't watch very much of EastEnders when Dan was in it and there was many reasons, mainly because his storylines were quite, I suppose, close to me in relations to myself and from my family. But I did watch literally his final few episodes and then previously watched back a few episodes when he left. Um, so I knew that Dan did a bit of work, same as Max and Gemma for an aunt to bullying a uh, charity which is also a charity I've done work for and so it kind of knew who he was and knew that people got Dan and Max mixed up how but um so obviously I saw him at Hull and um, made conversation with him because he looked like no one else was talking to him bless him and he was super lovely and so sweet and then I bumped into him again in London when he came to see an event Max's. Didn't know he was going to be coming, it was a bit of a surprise. So that was really good. And then I saw him in London in September when he did the play Eyes Closed, Ears Covered. And that was the first time I saw Dan on his own and it was the first trip I did on my entirely on my own. No one else with me, it was just me and myself and I. Apart from obviously I met people there. But yeah. And it was super lovely because um, I spoke to Dan a bit before, a lot afterwards and I think it was the chat afterwards that firmly put him in the place of yeah, we need to support Dan too. So I now have three faves. And I have them all for different reasons and they all give me different things and I hopefully will all support them in different ways. Um, so me and Dan is more because we have a few things in common, which I won't tell anyone about, but you know, there's a few similarities between us, which is actually quite nice and refreshing to see. And then finally, I saw Dan in Leicester when he was in Scrooge the Musical in the car of Leicester and that was on Friday the 15th of December so the start of my epic birthday weekend and it was, it was such a lovely day so I saw Dan before and after the show and just talked to him it was so lovely just talked to him like I talked to anyone else once I got the courage to go over to speak to him in the first place I was sat at my table for about five minutes before courage came in and I walked over but you know, it was well worth it and so I've had, so I've shared many a great memory and many a great day with all of my faves. And I really can't thank them enough for all they have done for me. Whether it be a retweet, a like, a quote tweet or a tweet or a direct message, their support and just general loveliness has meant so much to me throughout this year. 
As always, any year of framing can be a mixture of highs and lows and it's always good to have people there that I know have my back and I can ask them any question and they will help. And it really does make me so happy and I truly believe that through supporting my faves I've become me. I've become the person I should be by my travelling and going to all these random places that no one else has heard of and do my crazy travelling even if it does take effect on me. But yeah, it was so lovely. And through meeting all of my faves, it's meant I've managed to meet some new Twitter friends. So I started off the year again with my lovely Twitter bestie Hannah to see Max of St. Pool. But unfortunately I haven't been able to see Hannah again and I kind of miss her because she, she lives in the Isle of Wight and I live in Scotland. It's a, it's a very long distance between us. Um, but we also work on the fan account together and things like that. But there's just something different about actually seeing your Twitter best friend actually there. But fingers crossed at some point in the beginning of 2018, we get to see each other. So I've also met new Twitter friends. I've met Heather, who is part of my Gemma group. But also I met Heather when I went to see all three of them in Hull and that was just so lovely to meet Heather. I mean we'd been speaking for a few months before and it was so lovely to meet her. She's such a sweetheart, so lovely and we just hit it off straight away and then obviously I saw her again for Stevenage so we spent a bit more time together and it's just so nice to meet your faves with someone else rather than just on your own. Just gives an extra part to it. Plus it's also someone to talk to and someone to think for me leave try to relieve some of my anxieties about anything that's happened now but yes it was lovely to meet you Heather and when I saw Max in London I met my very very lovely friend Brittany so I'd been talking to Brittany pretty much since we started the fan account but we didn't really speak properly and then for most of the end of 2016, beginning of 2017, we really started speaking together. And then we were planning to just go somewhere in the summer when I was off work. And it so happened that one of the same weekends we could go was the weekend of the event in London. So we met and we had a fun weekend exploring London. We managed to uh, stumble upon the... What did we stumble upon? London and um, so we had such fun in London obviously we went to the event we also went to see Annie and um, which had Miranda Hart in it she was amazing so funny and we also saw Denise Welch as well Um, but yeah it was great fun even if she didn't have to put through Amy having a panic attack on the tube Um, and then sad news Um, Brittany is actually originally from Australia but studied over here in the UK and then started to live here but unfortunately due to certain reasons she had to go back home to Australia so she's currently back home so before she left we decided to meet up one final time and we went to Liverpool for the day and it was so lovely just to have a whole day with each other and we saw the sights of Liverpool did a bit of shopping saw like all the Beatles story and the Silverback story and the Caven Club. It was so lovely just to spend the whole day with my very, very dear friend. And I hope very, very much to see her very, very soon. But we still talk a lot. Thank goodness for social media, I tell you. And finally, we have very lovely Emily, who I call my little sister because she is younger than me. And so I first met Emily in London again, um, but I we do not been speaking that long. Since June, don't actually think there's been a day that we haven't spoken or every second day that we've spoken. Um, just about general life things, about Max and about anything that we takes our fancy to speak about, to be honest. Um, so I obviously saw her then, but I also saw her in Woking because she lives not far away 
That is when the misguided event of Emily and Amy failed to meet Max and there was a pane of glass between us. <laughs> that was good. Um, but yeah, but we kind of now laugh at ourselves for the unfortunate incidents because it's totally our fault. Totally not Max's. But yeah, but I had such fun handing over for, for the whole day, even though we're both very tired. Um, but yeah, it's great fun handing out with Emily and hopefully I will definitely be seeing her again next year. And my one of my longest Twitter friends, Nikki, who I know from way back from when I first started Twitter, she came to visit me up here in Scotland. So I had my first official house visitor, considering I'd been home for six years on my own. Oh yeah, took that long. But it was really good. I took her to the usual place and I took her to Gretna. We had a great few days just hanging out and just talking, a few drinks, some food and that. But it was just so lovely just to have her up here for a few days and show her around. So hopefully next year they may be future visitors from the world of Twitter to explore the delights of South West Scotland. So, as well as obviously supporting my very lovely three fakes, I also have another love, and that is the Five to Five Boys. Now, some of you may not know who they are, but they were the winners of the talent show Let It Shine, which was at the very beginning of the year. It was hosted by Mel Gardrich and Graham Norton, and the main judges were Danny Minogue and the very lovely Gary Barlow, was obviously a guest judge. So the winners were five to five and they are Yazdan, Sayo, AJ, Curtis and Nick. And they become the band in The Band The Musical. The Band The Musical is about how through a band five girls form a very strong friendship and even a number of years later that friendship is still there and they have the once in a lifetime opportunity to go for a backstage tour and that's all I know about it because I actually haven't been to see the show yet so it started in Manchester in September and because I can't wait I'm actually going to see it in January so when I went to see Brittany in Liverpool I decided to venture back to Scotland via Manchester a very rainy Manchester I must add and cold and I stood by the stage door at the theatre the boys were at for the first show and I managed to meet all of them. Um, plus Alison also who is one of the female cast members in the show. So that was really lovely and they were all so very sweet and very lovely and so down to earth. And it was so worth the wait in the cold and changing my plans. Now, I never win anything. I did. I won at a place at a fan event that the boys held in London uh, just a few weeks ago to just to celebrate their fans really and that was because I purchased a merchandise from their site. Now this was also the Sunday when we had very very bad snow. Somehow I managed to arrive from Scotland to London in one piece and on time. Um, but a few other people either didn't make it or had very much trouble but I could honestly say that I would not have got through the whole day if it wasn't for the very lovely Stacey and Gemma. So Stacey I'd been talking to pretty much since I became involved in the 5 to 5 fandom and Gemma just more recently. Um, so yeah so it was so lovely to see them and honestly I think we carried each other through the whole day with train delay, bus delays as it's getting there and then delays as it's getting home and everything not really working out and then just the whole day but we carried each other through and I will f be entirely grateful for you two girls for the love, support and help that we, I think we all gave each other on that day. So I also had the opportunity this year to go to the Theatre Royal Dumfries and see an evening with Christina Rianoff and Tristan McManus who may know as two of the professional dancers from Strictly Come Dancing. 
Um, I've always wanted to go to a show from Strictly Come Dancing Professionals, but I've never had the opportunity to be able to go. But the Theatre Royal is the local theatre to me, and I just had to take the opportunity. I also got meeting week tickets as well, so I got them afterwards, and they were so lovely afterwards, and pictures and signed things, and. So yeah, it was so lovely to see them. I actually did an actual whole vlog about this, so I will link to this um, below my vlog when I went to see them. But yeah, it was such a lovely show. It was so weird seeing like these people that you'd seen on TV for so long actually in front of you dancing. And they had the company of Mark Reed, who was from A1, and he sang all the songs for it. And it was so lovely, but it was such a good night. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself at the Theatre Royal Dumfries. The oldest working theatre in Scotland. Yes. So as you may also know, I am the chair of the board of directors of the Usual Place Cafe in Dumfries. So I have had another year being chair, which has made me be on local news twice, which still takes a bit of time in getting used to, seeing yourself on TV. I've been also filmed for other projects to do with Big Lottery. And I was also, my story, entire story, launched the Great Scott Awards as well. And we started the year by winning the Palmas Award for the most accessible building or business in the west of Scotland. So that was really good. And we firmly, I think, found our place last year with our team and our young people and what we wanted to achieve and deliver. And we certainly made very big strides in what we wanted to do and... I just love it. It is my second home. It's my second family. It's where I think it's where I feel my most myself and I can truly be who I want to be. But I will be entirely grateful for them carrying me through my university days. Um, because I literally started at the usual place when I started my OU course and they've been with me through the entire time. So thank you very much to all of you for your help. I alluded it to it before. So I have been at home for six years on my own, which is quite a big number and quite strange and a bit weird. And I'm not going to lie, it's not easy living on your own all the time. But through work, through the usual place, through uni work, through my adventures, you know, I'm never bored. Not going to lie, I'm definitely never bored. Um, Just, you know, just got to take each day as it comes and everything will work out in the end. I've also now been at my work at Tesco for eight years. Whoa! Um, which for me is a really big thing because when I was younger, the whole point of our actually being able to get a job and hold a job was quite a big thing. It was quite a scary prospect. Um, you know, having dyspraxia, being different, knowing I had differences, but trying to convey that to someone else to take a chance on me, to actually employ me. Um, Tesco was my only my second interview for a job and I got it. I am still there today. Um, and I've definitely changed throughout those eight years and I've definitely let more confidence and people skills and just general life skills that you, you generally need. And so what have I learned this year? Well, I've definitely grown in confidence a lot more. Um, I've never when my one of my faves has announced a show in a random place gone I'm not going to go there because I don't know where it is I've researched, found my way to get there which is the easiest for me, the most least changes I get there at a decent time which does mean a lot of overnight coaches but I've definitely not been scared to go to different places which is how I've managed to meet all my faves so many times this year because I've just went for it but I've also realised that I have a part of me to give to everyone else. Whether that be my faves or the young people that I work with or just anyone who wants to listen to me. That I do have a voice and people do want to listen to what I say. And people are just amazed about how I well I deal with life and all the things that have happened. And that I still have such a positive outlook on life and want to do all the things I want to do which is quite good and it's a thing that I think I've definitely taken more to heart and realised this year that what I do is 
probably quite remarkable but to me it's just everyday life it what life will be um so yeah i will allude to a few more of these ideas in future vlogs so now that we've looked back on 2017 let's look forward to 2018 2018 really <laughs> That means it's like nine, oh, and it's somewhere been nine, nine years since I left secondary school. I feel old. So, I will of course finish my university degree in June 2018 and my results should be in the July. Oh, so I will officially be a official graduate and I think my graduation ceremony is more towards the October, November part of the year. But I'll have a proper degree, proper certification, and I'll be released into the world of work and to start my career in changing the world one step at a time. Or at least influencing a few young people and showing them that you can do anything that you want to do, no matter how many people beat you down or tell you that you can't do something. Just do it. But I get to start the year by going to Liverpool and I get to see the band the musical the actual show so I think I might have to emotionally prepare myself for that show and I also can't wait to meet Alison who is one of my other Twitter friends from the 5 to 5 fandom and that's before I get to see the show at least twice when it comes to Scotland in June and of course there will be many an opportunity to hopefully meet Max, Gemma and Danby wherever they are in the UK doing whatever show they are doing but whether they are not doing anything that I can go to I will always be here supporting them no matter what whatever they do 100% behind you guys and I'm very much looking forward to another year as chair of the board directors of the usual place and um, to see the many new, new developments that we're going to have over the next year which is so exciting but I can't tell you about them and just to continue to offer my support to all of our young people, to our staff, and just to continue to show the world, show the local area that young people with additional support needs can achieve things, can have goals, can have ambitions, can do training, and can be in the world of work and go pretty far, because we're awesome. Um, I would of course love to meet some more of my Twitter friends, um, there's a little group of us from Team Max that I really, really want to meet. But A, they live in lots of different places and B, they're even younger than me. So it could be fun, but hopefully it will happen that we all get to meet each other. Um, I would also say I want to try and cook better and eat more healthily. No, not a diet. Just, I've kind of think 2017... I want to say lost my way a little bit with cooking. Um, I enjoy cooking. I want to say I enjoy it. But I think this year I've kind of lost my way with it and I've not been doing it as much as I should do. So I'm very much looking forward to getting back into this one of cooking my own meals and being a bit more organised when it comes to the kitchen. And that leads me to being more organised in general. I'm, I want to say I'm quite an organised person. I think I am. I mean to be more efficient with my day and even if it means in one hour doing a little bit of uni work, doing a little bit of reading, doing something, it's, it will all add up and it will all help me. So it's just been a little bit more efficient with my time before I go to work. If I've got a couple of hours before I go to work, I can get in some reading for uni, basically. And of course, to vlog more. <laughs> Considering I only started very at the end of the year, um, I would like to vlog more. Um, not sure if I'll be vlogging more of my adventures. Um, just because I think when I go on my adventures to meet my fave, I just want to be in the moment of meeting them. And when I meet them, those memories will never go away. Um, I don't always need to film footage. I've got camera footage, I've got handwritten messages, and I've got tweets, and I've got messages. But those memories of meeting them will always stay in my head. So I don't always need to vlog them. That I will never say I will never vlog an adventure to see my faves. It'll just be how the mood takes me on my journey. But I'm definitely going to vlog a lot more about me 
adult male dyspraxia and other things and you will see in another video that I've posted which I'll link below where I'm going to talk to you about what I will be talking through the next year. So this has been a summary of everything that Amy has learnt in 2017 and all the amazing things I've done and where I want to see myself in 2018. Um, I think it's just hit me that 2018 is a pretty big year for me. It's the year I graduate, it's the year I go and properly start my career. But all the developments I'm doing just now are all going to help me and further develop my career into what I want to do. So I'm really looking forward to 2018 and what it's going to hold. And whoever I will meet on my journey, I look very forward to meeting you on this journey. I look very forward to seeing my faves, Max, Gemma and Denton by again. And walk more. So I hope you've all had a very lovely Christmas. And I want to wish all my lovely subscribers and people who watch this vlog a very happy new year and I want to wish you all the very best for 2018. So as always if you like this video hit that like button and if you want to wait and see what you'll see from me in 2018 then hit the subscribe button. And if you've met me on my journey or you want to ask anything just in the comments below and it's time to say goodbye.